Okay. I have to speak to Voyo. So she must stand here. Okay. Hello. I have a good Okay. What's up, Wally? Bring the chair. Oh, but you are alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can bring a chair. I'll bring you a chair. Let's just quickly try and yeah, get that sorted. <laughs> Is, is he framing you properly? Okay. Room. Hadi <laughs> lady. so that we can just frame you. Because you both have to be in one frame. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you understand? No, 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 keep it here. There's an arrangement here. Are we ready? Are we ready, SBC? Great. Uh, that's D. S D. Are you ready? No. Okay. How much longer do you need, Ms. Uh, Ten seconds. Okay. Cool. Okay, colleagues, let's settle down in the meantime. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, welcome to our second media briefing uh, following the initial one that we had last week, Thursday, to give an update on the payment of social grants. 
Um, greetings to everyone who's here and everyone who's also joining us at home. Uh, my name is Nilon Weba Mshaoli from the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies. We are joined today by Minister uh, Gungubele, who's the Minister of Communications and Digital Technologies. Uh, Ms. Zulu is currently in transit, um, and but her team is here. We have the CEO the, of uh, SASA, Ms. Toti Memela, as well as the CEO of the Post Bank, Ms. Niki Bengashe. We also have the two DGs of the two departments and various other officials from both departments here today. So we'll ask Minister Kungubele to read the statement, which will provide an update on the payment of social grants, and then thereafter we'll then go into our Q&A. Thank you very much, Minister. Thanks very much, Ningleba. Uh, two CEOs, DGs, ladies and gentlemen from the media. As usual, we never tire to express our gratitude for the interest you show with regarding government de developments so that through you we get the capacity to talk to our people about those because they are the ones who are affected. We, as we said last week, we'll come back and we'll continue to brief. We are back here today to actually again say, here is an opportunity to engage with yourselves as we update you about the developments. Uh, we will engage at the right time. Ms. McLeod will actually be conducting that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed members of the media and all members of the public who are following this briefing from various platforms, thank you for joining us today. Before we start with the business of the day, Minister Zulu said, who is in transit, I must take the opportunity to inform you about the importance of today as we join the world in commemorating World Alzheimer's Day. On this Alzheimer's Day, we call upon all communities to familiarize themselves with this disease and to support families who may be affected by it and not to stigmatize anyone with this disease. Compatriots, the Department of Social Development and Communication and Digital Technology, along with their respective agencies, South African Society, Social Security Agency, which is normally referred to as SASA, and the Post Bank they have collectively convened this meeting briefing to provide the public with an update regarding the recent challenges that some social grant beneficiaries had with their Post Bank accounts. The briefing will provide a further update to last week's joint media briefing by myself as the Minister of Communication, Digital Technology, and the Minister of Social Development, Ms. Lindwe Zulu, together with CEOs of SASA Post and Post Bank. Minister Zulu is currently in transit. We have agreed that I would continue with the briefing with the support of her department. At last week's briefing, we reported that Post Bank had resolved the intermittent system challenges that resulted in some of our social grants recipients not receiving their grants one time. Furthermore, we assured social grants beneficiaries and the, national, and the nation at large that all outstanding reversals on the social grants accounts that were incorrectly debited would be corrected as soon as possible. Both teams from the Department of Social Development and Communications and digital technology together with their agencies have been meeting regularly to find a lasting solution to the technical challenges that ensued. Progress on payments. Today we are delighted to report that Post Bank has provided us with assurance that according to their records, all SASA grant beneficiaries whose accounts were adversely affected by the system challenges on the 5th and 6th of September 
have now been corrected. That applies to post-bank clients. These funds are readily available in the accounts of these beneficiaries and if not withdrawn can be assessed through bank ATMs, retailers and post office branches. We also would, we, we also would like to make beneficiaries aware that once their money is paid into their post bank account, they can access the money at any time convenient to them. We are making this point, ladies and gentlemen, because our people think that if they take their money once off, that is the solution, if they are, even if they are not going to use. All we are trying to reassure them is that even if you take 20 rand and take another 20 rand next week, your money remains safe. This is a normal bank account and clients do not need to withdraw their money at all at once. Clients can also use Sasa Cool Card to purchase goods at merchants. Noting that we will start with the October payment cycle in less than two weeks, we have started preparing to ensure that we do not encounter challenges that were experienced by our clients in this month. Our officials will continue engaging to ensure that we are ready to pay on time in the next month. The two departments and their agencies understand the regrettable strain that the grants payments challenges that we've experienced this month has caused in the most vulnerable of our society. That's why in this regard, we wish to reiterate our sincerest apologies to all social grants beneficiaries who have encountered difficulties accessing their social grants this month. Hijacking of this challenge for personal gain is another problem that concerns us. I must address the numerous accounts and statements circulating on various platforms seemingly motivated by attempts to misrepresent the root cause of the post bank challenges that affected social grants recipients post bank accounts this month. We want to place it on record that these stories are false and generally fabricated with the damage they keep on causing. The root cause of post bank systems challenges that affected the September social grants payment to some beneficiaries which have now been resolved as of the 6th of September relate to post bank's migration to a new system. Post bank systems upgrade program of which the recent migration forms a component thereof has been unfolding for a while in line with its 2022-23 as well as 2022-23 corporate plan and it is also a South African Reserve Bank requirements as part of post bank banking license application process. Special grants beneficiaries are also urged to ignore the false information that the September payment challenges are as a result of the expired SASA card. The Reserve Bank has granted extension for the SASA cards to continue to work until December 2023, so beneficiaries can continue to use these same cards. The department and their entities will regularly update SASA beneficiaries on the details of the card replacement program. Post Bank Board, we wish to assure social grants beneficiaries and the nation that the changes in the post bank shall not have in the the changes in the I beg your pardon, the changes in the post bank board shall not have an impact on any of our banking operation or the capacity of the post bank. The Post Bank is an oversight board appointed by the Minister as non-executive directors, so they are not involved with the executive level of decision or day-to-day -day operations of the institution. The Ministry has already commenced with the process of filling the vacant Post Bank board vacancies and an, advert an, advert an, advert an advertisement for nomination has been issued. In the interim, and to ensure that decisions that reside with the delegation authority of the board are enabled, the Ministry has appointed Mr. Kyle Tungema as the post bank administrator until a new board is appointed, which will happen soon. On the communications drive, both Minister Zul and I have seen the need for post bank and SASA to embark on more joint communication activities on the ground 
targeting outlying areas, including via community radio stations. Both entities, together with DSD and the DCDT, will engage on several outreach programs to ensure that the people we serve are better equipped with credible information. Sasa and Postbank wish to reiterate that, as agencies of government, they remain available to attend to any inquiries by grant beneficiaries that relate to their social grant applications and payments. For administration queries related to social grants, client can, clients can contact SASA on 0800 60 or via email grant, uh, grant inquiries at sasa.gov.za. In other words, it's G-R-A-N-T-E-N-Q-U-I-R-I-E-S at sasa.gov.za. Small letters. For bank account queries related to Sasa call card users, clients can contact Post Bank on 0800 53 or WhatsApp 073-806-1631. Email PB capital letter balancing says switch at postbank.co.za. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we are actively taking measures to prevent future challenges in our bank ecosystem, and in particular for our social grant account holders. Our commitment to the welfare and well-being of our social grants beneficiaries remain unwavering. We are investing in robust technology infrastructure, enhancing communication and collaboration among relevant agencies, and strengthening oversight mechanism <coughs> to ensure that uninterrupted flow of grant payments to those who depend on them the most. In closing, we recognize the invaluable role that social grants play in the lives of many South Africans, providing essential support and lifeline to countless families our commitment is resolute and we will continue to work diligently to overcome challenges and enhance the reliability and efficiency of our banking system. Finally, on behalf of both departments and their state agencies, we wish to extend our sincere gratitude to stakeholders in the payment value chain for their support during the September payment challenges period. We further call upon members of our society not to use this challenge for cheap political or criminal gains. We repeat it again. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Minister. Our colleagues will now go to questions. We'll start with uh, the colleagues uh, from the media who are in the room. I've, I've noted your hand. Uh, I can't see the gentleman in the Arsenal T-shirt. <laughs> He'll be second. Um, we'll take those two hands for now. Avuwe, you can proceed. Thank you. Uh, Avuwe from the NCA. Uh, Minister. I just wanted to check, are you visiting these places, um, your post banks essentially, or are you and checking what's happening on the ground, or are you relying on the word of post bank? Because you mentioned now that all has been resolved, but currently, if you check on ENCA, I have the app here, there are beneficiaries right now that are watching this um, uh, a briefing that haven't received that money. For example, Freddie Ford in Fragrant, that's in the Western Cape. He only has been paid half of his money. That's 1,080 rand. And he was told that there were insufficient funds. He still hasn't received the bulk of his money. Christian uh, Peterson, on 
on the screen an ENCA also hasn't received a single cent. From yesterday, he was told to come back on Friday. And if that is not resolved on Friday, to go back on Monday. So clearly, uh, there are people that haven't received their monies as yet. If you come to Johannesburg at the post office in Malaysia, where my colleague, Shalim Timkulu, is currently, you'll find that they're being told that the beneficiaries that are going there to want their money, that they must come back. Uh, well, they're told that money they be essentially. So they told that there's no money. So there are clearly beneficiaries that haven't received their money still on the ground. Are you doing the legwork yourself, uh, uh, Minister, or the different entities, or are you relying on post bankers? Contrary to what you say, it's evident on the ground that there are people, beneficiaries, that still haven't received their payments if you are to check on EMCA currently. Thank you, everyone. Um, you can go ahead. Thank you very much, Kaya. Vanessa, do you have questions online? Let's take three. Please send off your mic, Kaya. You just press, you press the button over there. Can you just repeat who asked the second question with regards to the KPMG report? It's Carol Payton. Carol Payton. The, the last question. And the, and the la can you just repeat the last question for the minister as well, please? It's Sine Sito from Times Live, the Post Bank CEO. Have there been more tests conducted in the recently upgraded front payment system after experiencing glitches earlier this month? That's the last question. All right. Has there been more tests conducted? Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, so we'll start with the CEOs uh, to answer the questions, and then we'll then have 
uh, the minister um, uh, follow. I think we can start with the CEO of, of Sasa because she only had one question. Then we'll go to the CEO of the Post Bank. Uh, very good afternoon to everybody in the house. Mulwene uh, Makaya, Sanbonani Nongke Makaya. Kaya, I know that this is your favorite topic uh, of the Eastern Cape uh, fraud, uh, uh, fraud that happened two, three years ago. The investigation is still continuing with the SIU, so I, I can't give you any feedback. With regards to cancelling the contract, we came back and consulted with our legal department. The contract could not be cancelled because it was duly awarded. The issue raised was as to whether there was a fraudulent or a relationship between people that were in the procurement space and the provider. So for now, we're not in a position to cancel the contract and it continues to exist. We'll keep you informed if there's any other new developments with regards to that. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon to the broader public, and thank you for the questions. So I'll start with the KPMG uh, public. I, I just want to, um, uh, uh, perhaps not correct, but just make a statement that the, the 90 million fraud case has been public even before um, uh, I joined. Even I um, googled all about it as I was researching for my first interview. So uh, I just want to make that statement that so that we know that that uh, amount has been public uh, since it happened. I even remember the interviews that took place um, uh, with the former Postbank um, uh, colleagues. Is the KPMG report public? I do not believe it is public as yet. Um, I do not believe it is public. It is still within, um, uh, within the Postbank and we are managing it uh, in terms of the recommendations by KPMG. Uh, the second question, has uh, there been more tests uh, that, have, um, that have happened since? Uh, perhaps let's, let's go back in terms of how testing when you do any IT change. So you do testing uh, before you do the, the change, which we did in this case. Uh, there's no more better testing when you go live. So, so perhaps uh, that's the best way to, to answer that question. When you go live, it's the it's best testing that you, you'll ever find even before testing on, uh, um, in an uh, uh, SIT environment. Um, so, so I'm not sure uh, of the question, perhaps. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe let's start with the KPMG report. Under normal circumstances, there's, there isn't much secretive about it, secret about it. But because there is this concern, and we have created a lot of curiosity about it, we will have DGs here, we will have to organize a special briefing on the KPMG report. And of course, we'll have to be properly legally advised where I'm sitting, there's, there isn't much to hide. But because there's this repetitive call, who is who and so on. I said in the last meeting, you know how litigious South Africa is. So we need to be properly advised. But I think under normal circumstances, public, the public is owed that special briefing so that we close this thing, that there's nothing that is being created in as far as those facts are concerned. Uh, maybe if we start with the RVU, I would have, let me put it this way, to, to, to respond to what I consider to be genuine questions. Minister Zulu has done some visit. I have arrived a night before last from the United States. I left here on Thursday after a press conference. I'm not going to say I'm going to visit or not visit. We've got a lot of our staff all over who have got a number of reasons to trust, by the way. But it remains important that as a minister, 
maybe find one opportunity or two to check for ourselves. So that point remains important, but it's not as if my colleague didn't do anything about it. But what are we responding to? We've got our technical people who are doing work. Because even when you go to the ground, you must know what you're going to check. You need to look at the records because our interface with our clients is in that system. We've got a new CEO who is hardly eight weeks. Maybe I forgot to say, Avio, we're very proud of the work she has done in such a short space of time. I'm sure you are amazed. If I tell you, as she's been interacting with you, she's, as we speak today, she's hardly eight weeks in this job. How she is stabilizing that institution is unbelievable. It will be remiss. And she's always available, by the way, whenever you guys want her. So the work she has done so far, everywhere, there isn't much basis for us to doubt and want to second her here, unless there's a, 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 an information contrary to that. Am I dismissing the importance of us going there on the ground? No. I accept that. That is one of doing those. But I wanted to say, we're not just trusting, trusting for the sake of trusting. Facts of the work she has already done demonstrate that she's worth our trust. Secondly, I would have thought of you, NCA would, give, would have given at at least 50 names, or maybe 100, because NCA has been speaking about thousands of people being reported who are not attended to. I thought this would be, this would be an opportunity so that we table a document here that says 1,000 or 2,000. But we appreciate the two or three that you are giving us because we take it positively. Anyone who queries the efficiencies of our intervention and do what you have done, we take it as a positive contributor because you are giving us facts. So we're going to follow this. Uh, and actually, our team is going to clear it. But I, I repeat what I said. Having listened to NCA, about this process, I thought you'd be saying at least 50, not 1,000, and give us that. Because it's very, very important to do that. Our people are hurting because of this issue. And the issue of payments of grant is happening in a number of channels in South Africa. So that's why we want to be clear when it is post office that is affected, it must be when it is post bank. Because you also spoke about people who visited the post office. That's a different issue. We're dealing here with the post bank. Post office is also our responsibility. If there are issues there, there are people who are leading post office who must be able to report to respond on that. So it's, it's important to separate fiction from what we call from facts. Yeah. So it's very, very critical because we are dealing with a sensitive matter of vulnerable people. Yeah. yeah. So uh Mawande is asking if if this uh, if these problems occur the following week. Well, I, I want to say to my wife, it will be for our employers to weigh the 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 weight of our inefficiencies, and we will always uh, subject ourselves to the will of our employers. But all what we are focused in is not whether we'll be fired or not fired is to do, do the best we can to resolve this issue. So I thought that's the little I can respond to Mwand. Let's come to Carol. As a matter of fact, I think it is misplaced to say this thing happened before this board. That's why I insist, DG, that we need to find a legally advised way <coughs> to do a press briefing on KPMG because there's a lot of falsification that has got a risk of actually taking rounds. The board that has left is comprised in two. The three who took more than, I think it's, is it more than a year, TG? Three years. Before the others join in October. Right? All these things happen under their, what to call, their leadership. The fact that the bank 
has got two years disclaimer to Carol happened under this board, right? As a matter of fact, we'll demonstrate to you when we do that briefing. There are new people who, I, I know we've discussed this with the DG, you, you feel such people would not have been affected in one way or another because they came here around October. But the challenge is they stayed here for a year knowing this, right? So I don't want to go to the details of that because, again, of a litigious South Africa. So I'm just trying to give you an impression that, a clear information that, stop this thing that this thing happened. Because we'll ask you which is the previous board you're talking about. You aren't, you aren't going to be telling you aren't going to tell us because such facts do not exist. With this board, this thing happened under the what to call. Of course, as individuals, it's always possible in, in, in an instance like this. And amongst them, they could be innocent or who are affected. But there is a particular communication. I want to repeat this. Before we almost, because they, they preempted us, eh? they left uh, on a particular day. When it was clear, based on our communication and, and my displeasure in the manner they ran the institution, they anticipated and preempted us. During that period, there's a lot of correspondences that have taken place, right? We know sometimes how litigious these things are. So you keep those, if you are called upon, there's a dispute in court, you're able to table those courts. So there's nothing untoward, there's nothing clandestine. I've never worked on clandestine issues when it comes to government. Our records are clear, that include Minister Zul, my colleagues. So I want to reassure, there is no previous board and the current board. And there's also an issue, colleagues. Uh, I've had two or three colleagues in public say, we are hurting uh, what professionals, right? I want to make a point on this. I'm one, I'll always be one of the first, first together with my colleague, Minister Zul, to protect professionals. You protect professionals when they are professional. The fact that you've got a tag of being a professional is not enough. You must always act in a manner consistent with that tag. So I'm not referring to any of the board members as I'm speaking like this. I'm making a general statement to those who say professionals are being attacked. Uh, what is left? I think I'm, I think I'm done. Yes, yeah. Um, thank you very much, Minister, and to both CEOs. Um, and Aviwa, if you could just please also just text us those details of the people that you mentioned. As we did, as the Minister said in the statement, as well as the CEO, um, our records indicate that everyone, the matter has been resolved and everyone has been paid. And that if there are those that you are aware of, we'd be more than happy to follow up. And I think we actually have, um, between the Post Bank team and the SASA team, been following up with your colleague to say, as and when you do encounter something, please bring it to our attention so that we can also check that against our records so that we can find out exactly what, what is happening. Um, and also just to indicate that the minister is actually, I think he forgot to say it, so I'll say it. The minister is actually doing daily briefs to the president on the matter. Um, every single day the minister is uh, together with both CEOs actually doing daily briefs to the president uh, to, to update, to keep the president updated uh, on, on the situation as it unfolds. Uh, we will go for our second round of questions, colleagues. Okay, we have a follow-up. Okay. Uh, so we'll start with Kaya, then we'll come with our viewer, and then we'll go to Vanessa. Can you speak a bit up? <coughs> Yes, you are. Please proceed. Yes, I just wanted to ask the prospect CEO regarding the KPMG report that you spoke about. Yes, I, it is more than 19 million. What I wanted to know was um, the, the, the change in the, in the switch.
issue the payment to prevent the fraud that happened. Are you confident that <coughs> such fraudulent double payments or whatever will not happen uh, with the new system that was necessitated um, by the, the KPMG report? Thank you. Thank you, Kaya. Aviwe? Thank you, Mr. Again from ENT. No, Minister, I was just mentioning those that are actually watching this moment on, on ENT. Okay. So you see. Right. Maybe what do you say to them and others, for example, in the Malaysia Post Office? I mentioned the Post Office because, in, 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 in the understanding I have, that's that they access the, the post office services through the Post Office. Not necessarily, <coughs> I would understand that that's how they access. Uh, the post bank services. <coughs> but what message would you give them then as government? As they say, they haven't received uh, their payments, contrary to what you say uh, now that everything has been sorted, they have received their monies, yet they've been told different things on the ground, Vanessa. Thank you, viewer. Uh, Vanessa? Can I see, both from Timeline has four questions. This is a follow-up question uh, related to the system testing. What was the size of the sample used when conducting the tests for the new payment system before implementation? That's a question for the Post Bank CEO. Uh, the next question is for Minister Bungubele. Was the grant payment system change rushed? The second question, are you not concerned about oversight at the Post Bank without a board? and having only two people on top management who have only been appointed for about two months. When is the new board for Post Bank expected to be appointed? Nona Ellen Gautana from Mnoba FM for Minister Zumbabele. The state-owned entity is responsible for handling over 10 million social grants across the country. As we know that social grants are important to the livelihood of the most vulnerable in our community and have experienced an inconvenience during the system glitch, does the government guarantee that it won't happen again? What criteria are you using in making sure that this doesn't happen again in the future? Thank you. All right, thank you. I think we'll start with the CEO. Um, and then we will then go to to the minister, CEO. Okay. So, so I believe um, I believe there were three questions. I hope I haven't. I'm not going to leave any. Um, uh, the first one talking about uh, I think from News Twenty Four. Uh, the confidence, uh, what confidence do we have that the new system will not allow fraud? I think uh, uh, perhaps let's understand, uh, you know, I'll take the case that we're talking about, the 89 million. Uh, in the investigation um, uh, of the 89 million, it's not only systems that were involved. There were people that were involved. Um, um, there's various um, uh, um, um, groups of people that were part of it. What we have done uh, is that with the information that we've gotten from KPMG and the recommendations, we are certainly putting those in place um, in terms of there have been people, if they were identified inside, that have been suspended. <coughs> Some of them have been um, disciplined. Uh, we have changed already in terms of how we look um, um, at the system, at the switching system, in terms of how we um, uh, buy integrated um, uh, uh, systems from one supplier, what risk that is. Uh, so there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot. We have hired cyber security capabilities that were not necessarily there before. Um, uh, we have uh, taken some capabilities from different vendors uh, to ensure that there's um, uh, checks and balances uh, so that um, one doesn't have um, through and through capabilities of our systems. So we've done a lot, but there's still a lot to be done. Um, there's still a lot to be done um, as we go through it. Um, I think that I hope that answers that. And then the size uh, of the testing, uh, I, I will not be able to give that number because I, I, I know that um, the technical guys will probably have it, but I don't have it at hand. 
as to exactly. But I can assure you that the different tests that were done, um, that needed to be done, because there is a program in terms of how you handle any migration, any IT testing. And I just want to emphasize again, because I think we're using this instance as almost a reflection of how the business conducts its work and does its IT changes. The business has done so, so many uh, um, uh, high value, uh, big changes since the beginning of the year, even before I joined because we have a variation notice and that 70% of that relates to IT capabilities. So the business has done great. I think you haven't had any noise of such um, uh, relating to those changes. It, ha it so happened that on this one, we had issues uh, post-migration um, and, and we know what those issues are. They were fixed on day one. Uh, and all that we're doing now is just to ensure that anything that was picked related to those issues, we, we, we make sure that uh, it's in place. Um, and also the planning of the change, uh, as much as the change happened in August, the planning of the change, I think I shared this somewhere, the planning of the change started already in July. So there was almost a month before we actually did the change that there, there was a planning uh, of the change. Uh, uh, and then I and think there was a question as to uh, uh, what criteria are we using to make sure that it won't happen again. I think relating to the switch the criteria that we absolutely use is to always test uh, as to what went wrong did we fix it do we know uh, that do we have assurance that what went wrong was fixed i think we've provided that because the issue happened on the fifth and the switch has been working um, as it should from the seventh and i think that's also something that we need to emphasize the switch has been working as it should from the seventh already um, uh, as the issue happened on the fifth um, and and um, even uh, um, Above that, we're just even making sure with other technical capabilities to, to increase any capacity that relates to how the switch works. I hope I've, uh, hope I've answered everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, I thought I should repeat something because with due respect in my view, I think of you in terms of our record, NCA is continuing something which I think is not helpful. NCA says as we as we conduct this in this briefing, Minister Lindwezulu a no-show in the press briefing. I mean, I don't know how do you guys expect us to react to that because as we talk now, she's on air. What does ANC, the, the, at the risk of concluding that NCA is pushing a political agenda, not a media communication agenda? Because what do you want to achieve when we say to you as a matter of fact, the minister is in transit. You guys know, Minister Ndlindwes will never run away from any press briefing. Now here on record, we can show you. NCA, as we speak now, says Lindwes will a no show. No, no, we'll come to that. Allow me to address, and now we are, this is record, we're not even fabricating this. Secondly, the least NCA can, show, can help us, as they continue now to say hundreds of people are wherever. Please, we, we read the numbers. What's up? Toll-free numbers and everything. You must know, no matter how dedicated we are, we cannot be everywhere at all material terms. But our people, they've got cell phones, they've got radios, they've got whatever, and... The fact that NCA is able to know where they are, we are asking you as media people to give them these numbers. You have given us two names, but NCA continues again. In, in mathematics, they call it uh, solving for x, variable or something like that, solution for x. Every time we say we are able to calculate, give us the facts, we will solve for x. They, they just throw an x in the space and they are not actually assisting. And I'm saying, please, NCA, we want to work with you. We want to work with you in resolving the problems of our people. I want to repeat this. Unless you actually forcing us to conclude 
that NCA is not about resolving the problem that we're confronted. By the way, it's our people who are affected by this thing. Because you are beginning to force us to think as who is NCA, right? E ENCA. We don't want to get there. You know I, I, I don't fight with media, no matter what they say about me. Because I respect you guys, you are there for that job. But if this institution treats us like this, it's a problem. It's not helping the people who are suffering. Let us say the system is failing. Let's say that. How is NCA on a daily basis assisting them? If they don't give them the numbers that we're giving NCA, if they don't call us and say, at a particular post office, our people are going to go, by the way. I just want to tell you now, Dick, and so if, if the NCA can say, in a particular post office, at a particular po at this time, in almost every area we've got branches, we are going to send people to resolve that. But if we say everywhere, hundreds, our two, please, we want to respect NCA as an independent media. Please help us think like that. Attackers, criticizers will never fight with you. You can check my track record. I don't fight with media. I don't have time for that. But now we're dealing with a matter which is affecting vulnerable people. Please, guys, sisters, I repeat, Lindwe Zulu, a no-show, surely. That's unacceptable. It's totally unacceptable. And the other thing, by the way, I think I must say this, uh, CEO. Lindwe Zulu is not administering these, what to call, these payments. It's my department and its entities that is dealing with this. And I'm prepared to take the flag for that. And I've watched her, have you, being attacked on several bases, on something we in my department are supposed to take what to call flag for. And what has she done? Why are we doing this to her? What's the problem? Is it about resolving this matter or targeting her? I thought I must make that point, because this to me is totally unacceptable. So having said that, to the people of who you spoke about, the least we can say is again repeating the numbers that we, we read. I hope I can catch them quickly for the sake of your insistence, which I think I still want to assume is, 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 is of genuine concern. Where is this? Where is these numbers? Praise what? Yes. Where are they? Yes. We said Sasa, we said for bank accounts, queries related to Sasa, gold cards, clients can contact Post Bank, Post Bank on 08005354555. What's up? 0738061. Right? We are saying to NCA, you are available. Chase us everywhere. I repeat, we've got branches almost all over the country. Tell us the area. The CEO are going to make a call and make sure that people check who those people are. Right? We'll, we'll, we'll do everything we want to help our people. But this approach is not going to resolve this thing. So that's the list for now of what we can do. And if we can be told before we leave here, yeah, which areas, and I can, as we leave here, yeah, there will be agents who will be sent to those areas where our people are. Because we are committed. Some of us, by the way, the, the only thing we have lived for of you, for SP, we have lived for our people. We can tell you stories about how we got where we are for our people. So we cannot just abandon them now overnight. So my appeal, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm fine. But my appeal, please help us, guys. I know, unfortunately, you are the one from... You, we're not saying it's you who's doing this thing. Unfortunately, you are from ANC. <laughs> it's okay. Or if you have answers, we never will deal with that. It's fine. Uh, uh, the other issue was... Hmm? Oh, no, no, I think I've tried to do that. Uh, and Nobo, maybe I, I thought it was important to use Nobo call to say, if I had them properly, to say, 
out of almost 18 social grant beneficiaries, huh? 18 million. Post Bank is dealing with almost one third of that. It's important to also know that. One third of that. So we're answering for that one third year as far as Post Bank is concerned. But as government, it doesn't matter where else it's happening. We are always responsible, even if it's not, whether it's not in the post office, it's not in the post bank, we share the concern with Sasa about ensuring that our people are in a better place. Uh, yes, oh, yeah, the, the very important point I nearly forgot, Chef, from Usinesipo. She says, was this thing not rushed, the moving from one system to other? I hope you have answered that. Thank you. If you have dealt with that, it's okay. Now, the question is, how is the oversight going to take place? Last week, I said, on that day, an advert will be issued. We said to you, we are appointing an administrator whose track record in South Africa, you can't question. Part of the turning around of SARS, part of the turning around of Ugurulene, part of a DG of Mpumalanga, uh, with an uh, impeccable record, Mr. Kali Tungem is going to administer. I don't think it will go beyond two months, by the way. We said we're going to issue adverts that day. We did uh, on the same day. Some of you must have watched your media, you must have seen it. Because we mean business about making sure that this institution is under capable hands. As, because this is a financial institution. Not that any other institution deserves this other issue. So I'm, I'm trying to reassure Sinesipo about how the oversight is going to be done. Already the CEO has come in hardly eight weeks, has demonstrated her capability, combination with the administrator and the adverts that are actually are out, and the department, we've got what you call in our department an oversight, a, st a state entity oversight unit. It's going to be working with all of them. So it's not like the post bank is left in the open field. So I'm trying to reassure the, the question that has been raised by Sir so everyone. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, thank you very much, Minister. Uh, we we will take one last round if there are any burning questions that have not been responded to. <laughs> I do have a question that you want to respond to the first there. Okay. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Are there any other burning issues, colleagues? The, okay. All right. No, 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 no. That's fine. Um, uh, a viewer. Oh, thank you. Uh, I, I just think it's a bit unfair to to suggest that ENC has an agenda when. For example, this morning we are at these areas where these people are inside. For example, I mentioned the Venezia post office where they're told that you might be leave. Um, and for example, the ones that are in Cape Town are with the team in Cape Town where they say they've either been paid half of their money or haven't received any. And I think as a, a media company, it's, it's only our responsibility to. to to ask those questions and not to just take on face value what you'll be telling us as government. You mentioned that um, that, that, that call out here say around Minister Lindy Wenzel who's saying that she's a no show. As, 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 as much as you may have explained it, but it's the reality that she isn't here now. She might be traveling, um, which is a. Okay, I'll be right. Okay, let's, let's allow him to finish. Let's allow him to finish. Uh -huh. but, but factually, if we are to speak facts, the minister is not here. It's a crisis, of course, that's um, 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 engulfing a lot of people. Uh, we'd expect that the minister be here. Not that it's it's part of any malice or anything. We're just reporting, we're just reporting on what's happening here, uh, minister. So I think it's a bit unfair to say that we've got an agenda politically or otherwise, when our duty as journalists is to report what's happening on the ground, and we give you what's been happening today. And... Yeah, I think it's just a bit unfair, Minister. All right. No, no, no. Thank you, Aviwa. I think, firstly, um, the Minister firstly reiterated that as government, 
uh, we are committed to working with the media, which is why we appreciate the fact that every time we have a message to communicate, you do come and you do provide uh, that platform for us. I think <coughs> at the beginning of the media briefing, um, we did state that Minister Zulu is not here and we stated the reasons as to why she's not here. When the minister also spoke, uh, the minister stated she's not here and also stated the reasons why she's not here. A no-show, I don't want us to get into semantics of what English means. A no-show means when someone does not pitch and there's no explanation for their absence. And I think, and I think that is not what happened today. But we also don't want that to be what becomes uh, you know, the big story out of our media briefing. As far as we are concerned, we came to give an update on how far or how we've resolved the matter. Um, members of the media, like yourselves, are saying that actually there are people um, that are still in queues. And we've said we would like those, the details of those people. We've even stated that uh, the teams of SASA and the teams of Postback will be going out into the communities at the various post offices, particularly the two that you've mentioned, the two areas that you've mentioned in Lanesa as well as Bonneville. We already have people following up on that, and we do appreciate you giving us that kind of information. And just to reiterate, I think that's the kind of relationship that we want to have. We want to have a relationship where if there is a problem that you do pick up, it does you know, get to us as well so that we can ultimately resolve the question or resolve the matter and not have a situation whereby we are speaking past each other. Uh, I think more than anything, that's the crux of what we wanted to, to communicate. And, and we want to continue working with colleagues in the media. ENCA, Newsroom, uh, you know, News24, we, 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 we appreciate the relationship that we're building. Um, and we also understand the importance of the fourth estate within a democratic society. And that's why we'll continue engaging each other. Um, and I think that brings us to the, to the end of our media briefing. Thank you very much, colleagues. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, colleagues. And as we did say that we are more than happy, we've issued the, the, um, the various uh, contact details, toll-free numbers, and we'll definitely follow up on those two sites that you have brought to our attention. And if there are any, please feel free to, to do so. Thank you very much, colleagues.